Yo, what is really good, my dudes? Today is Monday, November 6, 2017, and we got another RuneScape update for y'all. So, today we see the release of a Christmassy style November event known as Going Like Clockwork, as well as some changes and updates to the Revolution Combat Mode. So, let's just jump right into it. So, for the Going Like Clockwork event, Santa is going on annual leave from the 13th until the 26th of November to emotionally prepare himself for the frantic festive season. In his absence, Ira, the head elf, has been left in charge. But all is not merry, especially among the mischievous snow imps who resent Santa his me time. They've made their misery known by stealing all of the pieces of Santa's prized clockwork toy and hiding them around Gilinor. Save Santa his sensibilities by collecting all 10,000 clockwork pieces and returning them to Ira in Berthorp before the boss returns. Skilling PVM and collecting daily challenges all yield pieces that as does catching snow implings. Don't fret, you'll be amply rewarded for your troubles. If you have pieces to spare, why not cash them in for mystery boxes? In them are Christmas items from 2014 and 2015 as well as the usual fair yield. All such prizes are now tradable. So very similar to what we've seen in the past like Deathbeard's Demise, The Fall at Nihil, and similar events. Just play the game and collect all the pieces needed to gain the rewards. Now let's move on to the Revolution updates. Revolution is now more laid back than ever. With enough adrenaline, you can now automatically trigger thresholds and ultimates. And with a resizable window, you can now tailor exactly how many of your abilities should be automatic. Furthermore, to ensure that a balance is struck when fighting monsters in different modes, we've increased the average floor damage given by both Legacy Combat and Special Attacks. Legacy PVM Combat has had its minimum hit up to 33% of damage potential up from the previous 0%. The special attacks in Legacy and ELC have been buffed to shift 20% of random damage onto the existing damage floor. So that is your main game update this week. Let's go ahead and dive into those patch notes and see what exactly we got going on over there. The ability to quick travel to temple trekking is now available on the Mortmire Swamp entrance gates via a right click option instead of a toggle. The highest tier of Menagerie pet houses now have 30 slots up from 25. Players can now dismiss pets directly from their Menagerie. Coins obtained via the Queen Black Dragon loot chest now move to the money pouch when claimed. Flame Burst defenders now provide the effects of a real defender. The interface layout presets have been updated to better resize and handle tertiary interfaces, such as the Slayer counter for both standard and legacy modes. The XP lamps rewarded for completing Heroes quests are no longer non-members objects. Sixth Age quests are now marked on the quest journal with similar messaging to Fifth Age quests. Several agnostic quests have been recategorized as Fifth Age quests. The quest list now has an option to categorize into Fifth and Sixth Age. The progress category in the quest list now displays completed quests at the bottom of the list instead of the middle. A quest accept interface has been added to the following quests. I'm not going to go over exactly what quests because it's a very long list, but at any point you can pause the video in case you want to see exactly which ones now have an accept interface added to them. The following quests now award XP lamps containing the quest reward XP. So I'm not going to go over exactly which quests, but a lot of the quests that previously just gave you flat out XP now give you an XP lamp instead. So you can choose to destroy it or activate it yourself and gain the XP needed. So it's a nice change they did it that way. Again, just pause real quick if you really want to see which ones. Every summoning scroll now has a tooltip of what the effect is. The following summoning scrolls have been updated. The Abyssal Drain scroll now heals up to 50 prayer points, up from 5. Spirit Dagonoth, Desert Worm, Minotaur, and Arctic Bear scrolls now bind the target correctly. Lava Titan scrolls now drain 5% adrenaline correctly. The Stranger Plant and Swamp Titan scrolls now poisons for up to 200 damage, up from 20. The Zeki scroll can now damage up to 5 targets, up from 2. The Vampire Bat Scroll now heals a player for up to 50% of the damage dealt, up from a fixed 100 life points. The Bloated Leech Scroll now won't heal if health is below 600, up from 60, and deals 100 damage, up from 10. The Spirit Scorpion Scroll now works by applying Weapon Poison to a player for 30 seconds. The Luck of the Dwarves Ring now affects the chance of receiving an offhand Kopesh of the Caridian from treasure chests inside a Shifting Tomb. Players can now jump over the Strange Floor Agility shortcut in the Taverly Dungeon when on the west side standing south of it. Corrected a spelling of Ethereal components. Sophonem Slayer Dungeon Chest now warns players when discarding a single item from it. 
Shooting Star and Evil Tree are no longer displayed as members only on the minigame spotlight interface. Obtaining a Strange Luck will now correctly state the rock skill name when acquired. Fixed an issue where members logged into a free world could not open chess rewards in the Broken Home quest due to the members skill cap on free worlds. Completing the Dragon Slayer quest no longer displays an Ernest the Chicken achievement. Players can now reclaim a Desert Amulet 4 if they already have one keepsake. Corrected a debug name for Aristarchus from appearing occasionally during the Arman in the North quest. Corrected a typo when Krondis speaks to the player during Crocodile Tears. Corrected the spelling of Legio Secundus on the Stand Your Ground achievement. The They All Fall Down achievement can no longer be completed in a group. Added a pop-up message to the Queen Black Dragon does her extreme dragon breath if the player is carrying an unforged royal crossbow. The auto setup action bar option once again checks for empty slots and collapses the abilities to the front of the action bar. The auto setup action bar option no longer adds trout to the action bar except when undertaking combat academy training. Players will no longer miss two abilities when using the auto setup action bar option. Extra blocking has been added to some tiles northwest of the mage training arena to prevent players from getting stuck. It's no longer possible to consume a great gunkin when the player has more than maximum number of life points. Players can now destroy a whole elite skilling outfit set from the backpack at once. Fixed a typo in the Adam and Dragon entrance barrier within Brimhaven Dungeon. Corrected a typo in the Kirill section of the Beast tab attack descriptions. Players can right-click enchant via Thormac. Players now have an enchant all option via right-clicking the images within the Thormac enchant interface. Corrected a typo on closed pole booths. The Staff of the Mine is now correctly found under Stab's filter in the wardrobe. Fix some stretching on the climbable wall on phase one of the Virago encounter. Teleporting out of V's ancient cave now clears the skybox. Graphically updated the wilderness warning interfaces. These warnings can be toggled on or off in the game settings, Doomsayer warning settings interface. Updated port resource crate interface to be a lot cleaner and easier to read. And finally graphically updated Thormax battle staff shop. And here are some quick hot fixes that went live throughout the week. You can pause the video real quick if you want to check them out. But they've already been in the game prior to today's update. So it's not anything new right here. So yeah, that is it for today's update, guys. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. If you're not subscribed to it and you want to stay updated on all things RuneScape related, then hit that subscribe button. Anyways, I appreciate you guys watching. I'm out. Peace.